Coming up in this week's show... Xbox is on the spot as we send Alex along to the UK unveiling of Microsoft's new console. Ian trots out a load of classic TV gags as he reviews James Bond. Go on, Ian. Same as Funny Fanny. <laughs> Stop it, Alex. Basically, we let our hair down and have loads of fun because it's Christmas! Brilliant! But first up... I can give two pieces of advice to anybody who wants to become a pro snowboarder. First, don't eat the yellow snow. Second, practice, practice, practice. And please, sir, I live in the desert and there's no snow on mountain and therefore I can't go snowboarding. Well, don't worry, kids. We've got the solution. This, my unathletic compadre, is the Pro Play Game Board and this is its ridiculous tiny Wii controller. Now, you can play virtually any PlayStation game you want on it, but it was obviously originally designed for skate, surf, and snowboarding. Now, it works using the pressure principle, which means basically you stand on it, you weave around like a holy dancer in slow motion, and then hopefully you get to the end of the race. Now, lanky, hop on and prepare to eat snow. The board has directional sensors underneath and a hand controller which controls speed and jumps. In addition, the controller vibrates, ensuring that you feel every bump on the way down. Fantastic! And I look so cool doing it too. Ian and I are playing Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboarder, a brand new PlayStation 2 race and freestyling snowboarding game featuring the six times Winter X Game gold champion Sean Palmer himself. In the game, you can play in eight real-world locations and with one of nine top borders. Well, it certainly adds something to the game. It won't make a bad game good, but it can make a good game, well, a little bit too awkward to play, to be honest. It feels nice, nice suspension, but I'm having trouble working out what I'm doing here and comparing it with what's on the screen. I'm the oh. king of the hill! <laughs> Boards are a good add-on to your cupboard of ridiculous gaming peripherals, but unless you're one of those irritating extreme kids, you probably won't have it at the top of your Christmas list. And remember, even if you're rubbish at the real thing, even Ian can almost stay on for about five seconds without humiliating himself. How long was that? I'm sick of shooting, of killing, of maiming, of causing unnecessary pain. I want to do something good. I want to give love, man, not take it away. I want to be in a Disney movie. And Jack and Daxter on the PlayStation 2 is just about as close to Nirvana as I'm going to get. You see, once upon a time, there lived a comedy duo named Jack and Daxter. They lived a peaceful existence next to the sea. Wow! How did you do that? One day, however, they decided to take an ill-fated walk, and Daxter fell into a pit filled with a substance that turned him into vermin. Cue adventure with hilarious consequences. Man, that stung! Jack and Daxter is very Donkey Kong, very Mario, very Zelda. Hey, it's a very Nintendo game. It's an innocuous 3D action adventure with immense levels, beautiful graphics, and literally thousands of unusual objectives, from catching 200 pounds of fresh fish to trapping an artist's muse. Shock horror, it's on the PlayStation 2. Across an impossibly vast 15-level world, you interact with at least 35 characters who give you primary tasks that open up new worlds, new goals, and new mini-games. Here's your power cell for your valor. It's seamlessly pieced together and strangely non-linear for a plot-driven game. If you thought the between-level train sequence in Tomb Raider 4 was inventive, well, prepare to add new brain cells, because this really challenges. Every area can be revisited and everything is exactly as you left it. Kind of like living in your own flat. You know that when you wake up the next morning, those dishes you couldn't be arsed to wash will still be there, festering away. Now, if you only use your console for GT3, Tekken, and multiplayer FIFA, then leave Jack and Daxter behind. This game isn't for the post-pub, pissed-up, doobie-smoking muncher. This is not a social PlayStation game. But it's an excellent, inoffensive PlayStation 2 romp through a Nintendo-like world. Fun. One for your kid sissy or grandma. Or those over 27-year-olds who insist on catching all the Pokémon, all the apples, and all the stars. Like me. Christmas! Here you go, Ian. I got something for you. Oh, nice one. Thanks very much. Alex, I got you a present as well, which is so cool. Now, it's estimated that total spending on games by the end of the year 2001 will be one and a half billion pounds. So get rid of that brute and get something hip, cool and futuristic for your best friend. Oh! Nice one. A beancast. Beancast, what I've always wanted. Thanks. Cheers. 
the time for our jury to undergo another marathon thumb bashing session in the interest of worldwide gaming. And because tis the season to be jolly, we've given them some top comedy titles that'll get the whole family pissing themselves around the Christmas television. Three games will pivot and grind in front of our panel, but they can pick only one. First up, Worms Blast for the PlayStation 2, PC, GBA and GameCube. Similar to the puzzle bobble genre, this time we battle against friends online if you must. But does it rise to the surface or wallow in its own mulch? Worms Blast, 3D at last. Are the graphics impressive? No, you said 3D, Alex. I have to correct you. It's 2D game. Strictly 2D puzzle game. It's not your usual mayhem. Um, Worms Battle, really. How does Worms Blast compare to the original? Well, not very much at all. Your deathmatch is more like a quibble. It's something like Tetris, almost, with all your blocks and rules and everything, but you don't really have much else to death over. Why have they tried to pull something like this out of a Worms franchise? To make money, Alex, so mm. let's be honest. Dirty, filthy lucre. It's, it's an old idea. They've revamped it. Next up is the off-the-wall Floyger Brothers, featuring Moigle, who is apparently the most realistic AI character ever made. The game has 13 areas of junkyard, over a dozen mini-games, and the ability to trade your Moigle across the internet. Is this an hilarious, fun-filled romp or tiresome, irritating nonsense? Can there be such a thing as a comedy computer game? I wasn't quite convinced until I saw Floyger Brothers, which is very funny. Well, tell us what bit made you laugh. You get to give your brother a nice big hug. Hug. You get to give your brother a nice big hug, and that's your idea of, of an hilarious joke, is it? Oh, <laughs> giving your brother a big hug. Well, it's a funny hug, and he's a big guy, and you're wee. And <laughs> when you put it like that, it sounds absolutely brilliant. <laughs> you say it. The big, <laughs> the big, <laughs> Name some other funny bits in there. Uh, there was a very cute cat, which turns out to be... Paul. Evil. Paul, can I stop you there? <laughs> cute, evil cats are not funny. That's quite, quite a serious thing. Let's not make any jokes Sorry. about that. It's a puzzle game. The puzzles are important. Are they challenging enough? They're challenging to the point of frustration. Can you give us some examples for people who haven't seen the game or heard the game? Can you do some of the different voices for us? It's Moida. That's one of the voices. Well, that was just your your, your normal voice. Well, let's let's move on. <laughs> Moida is supposed to be the most realistic cartoon character ever made. Is this true? Um, he certainly looks the part, but I found him very annoying. Very annoying, big fat look. But it seems that the Floygan brothers get a sort of thumbs up from our people for what they think of Polaroid Pete. You play Pete, whose job is to stalk people in a paparazzi style. You dirty beasts. The game was originally called Gebiko 2 in Japan, but JBC picked it up for release in Europe along with Polaroid, hence the new name. Weirdo Pete Goldman is a news hound desperate to gain the Pulitzer Prize for photos of Japanese events. There are 14 locations, including Pete's own wedding, but you can't afford to be snap happy. Film is mighty expensive, as your mum always told you. But will our jury get the money shot this evening, or will it be a bit of a soggy tissue? Well, basically, you're working for a paper, and you're the paparazzi as such. You've got to go out and take pictures of controversial episodes in life. So, like, taking a picture of Coachella is going to be worth more points than a picture of a Japanese schoolgirl. How playable is it? Oh, so playable. You end up with, well, I find myself playing it for hours on end. I think it's great. Now, the graphics on this look a bit weird. Do they add or detract to the game? I think they add. I mean, it's a really daft game. It's a daft idea. You are in taking pictures of everything, so uh, the graphics fit, really. Mm. Pete's got a bit of a weird walk, hasn't he? Yeah, Pete have definitely motion captured John Cleese for this one. What's the pervious thing you've got to take a picture of? Japanese schoolgirls. No, shut up. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you think this type of game will take off in the UK and Europe? Uh, we'll possibly get a small cult following, but games like Parappa the Rapper or Rib Ribbon never really smash the market. When you're playing the game, are you motivated to get to the end goal, or is it just a bit boring? Uh, oh no, you definitely want to get to the end. Uh, nice short levels as well, and you want to get through the levels and see all the crazy comedy moments. Tell us some of the crazy comedy moments that you spotted. Well, there was a big dinosaur and it stood in a guy. Imagine you're the wife of that guy who's been stood on by a dinosaur. How hilarious is that? It's not funny. Exactly. So with uncharitable Christmas spirit, our jury wouldn't thank you for worms this year. They wouldn't mind the Floygan brothers on their Christmas list, but it'll definitely be Polaroid Pete that will get them having a happy, raucous, crazy Christmas time yuletide. Uh, clicky teeth, clicky teeth with the hands on the top. Hello, I've got red hair, the eyes. You should have a shave. That's not a film title, that's just a suggestion. Hello, welcome back to Thumb Bandits, where there's a kind of end of term type feel, because me and Alex are playing a fantastic game of charades. But don't feel left out. If you want to play some family favourites at home, check out our top five party games you might be interested in. I've got it, Arthur 2 on the rocks. 
If you prefer to make your embarrassing fashion faux pas in the privacy of your own home, then look no further than Cosmopolitan Virtual Makeover 3 for the PC. While not a game, it is great fun and a wet dream for narcissists. Change your hair, your eye color, and even see what your wedding photos will look like. Oh, that's so not me. Oh, yeah, that's better. It's an oldie, but it's just too good to leave out. Yep, put on your drainpipe jeans and get down to Dance Dance Revolution. You'll need a couple of dance mats and your PlayStation. And once everyone's overcome their initial embarrassment, they'll be leaping about like a demented Spice Girl. Gambling's a mugs game, but if you're gonna gamble, you might as well play at home. It's safer, and you're less likely to burst out crying and plead for your money back. Caesar's Palace on the Dreamcast PC and PlayStation will give you all the thrills of Las Vegas. But where are all the cocktail waiters and sexy croupiers? Next up, if you're out for that elusive Christmas kiss, well, forget mistletoe. Just practice your pulling technique with the Sims Hot Dates expansion pack for the PC. You can take your dream dates out on the town, and with over 40 new social interactions, the Sims can flirt, play footsie, get off with each other, gossip about the couple at the next table, or chat in Simlish about what colour underwear they're wearing. And finally, warble or gangster rap into the MTV Music Generator's special microphone sampler kit, which is available for the PlayStation 2 and has great potential for embarrassment. Pussy. Right, let's not piss around. There is, as we all know, only one James Bond. One man alone has portrayed the super spy accurately, and that performance, of course, comes from Roger Moore. Forget tax exile Connery or the New Zealand fella, Moore is Bond. 007. A CIA agent is being held in this research facility. She was caught while retrieving a case containing suspicious research materials. Unfortunately, the new James Bond game, Agent Under Fire, on the PS2 features current 007, Pierce Brosnan. Now, I haven't seen a Bond film since the crushing disappointment of actually paying to go and see Octopussy. Anyway, although I've never seen Brosnan play Bond, I do know what he looks like, and it's nothing like the fella in this game. This chap looks more like a milkman. Quite a handsome milkman, it must be said, but a deliverer of milk nonetheless. Your sexy assistant is reminiscent of Jennifer Lopez, and no doubt this sort of game will become the mucky book of the 21st century for horny 13-year-olds. What is important is this. Is the game any good? Yes, it's shit hot. First off, the game looks beautiful. These are stylish graphics that almost meet the promise of the PS2. Buildings look great, and other characters have a kind of realism about them that makes it more fun when you shoot them in the eyes with your water PPK. We have an intruder. Do not let him escape. Being Bond, you need weapons and gadgets, and they're an impressive display here. Laser cutters, door decoders, bra unfasteners. They're all at your disposal as you guide 007 to victory against international evil and bad people in general. Now, these are the sort of gadgets that every young boy dreams of having when he's playing spies, and it's a pleasure to use them in this game. But before you ladies write in, I only say boys because I am a boy and I don't understand the minds of girls. An important factor in these type of games is the learning curve. Make it too difficult to start with and you'll play it twice. Make it too easy and it'll be finished in 20 minutes. James Bond gets it just right. The earlier missions are smaller and are geared up to teaching you how to use your collection of tools, but they gradually grow and get harder at a decent pace, without leaving you behind. What separates this from other movie times is the fact the story has been especially created for the game. It's your standard Bond fare, of course, but at no point in the game are you trying to recreate a scene from a film. It's all up to you. Anyway, I must go, because I've just got a copy of Moonraker. I've been told it's absolutely fantastic. But before I do shoot off, I will just say that James Bond Agent Under Fire is a brilliant game. And I, for one, certainly can't say Dr. No to this beauty. James Bond Agent Under Fire is out now for the PS2. Well, at last, after all the hype and the build-up, it's finally here. Well, Almost. Today is the first day us Brits can finally get our grubby little mitts on a fully-fledged, totally legitimate Xbox. Microsoft's new console won't be in the shops in Britain until March next year, but in the months up to the launch, they'll be teasing us with a traveling Xbox experience. The event gives gamers the chance to play on the new machine, to see the graphics, and Microsoft hopes to pre-order one. But mostly they want to create a sense of excitement. I met up with David McCarthy of Edge magazine to take the industry pulse. When Microsoft does something, the world sits up and takes notice. So, but you know, there's a certain kind of brand awareness there already. Halo, well, I mean, you know, I, I 
played Halo and it makes me want to go out and buy one. And if I had the money, I'd buy one and import from America. If this was a movie, I would watch this. But it's not. I can play it. Microsoft marketing guru Richard Tevashem feels confident of their chances. It's the games and what the games can do. If the games are better, Xbox will win. It's huge. I mean, just look at the size of this. It's larger than my head. It's bigger, better. I don't know. It's just going to be heavier to carry home from the shops. Um, and in Japan, you know, where they've got kind of really small rooms, like they literally have it, it's actually an issue, you know? It's three times the power of any console today. It will have by far the best games. It has the most graphic, powerful graphics chip on the planet. Um, it's got Dolby 5.1 surround. It's got a hard disk. And it's got broadband on board. What we want is a killer launch lineup, but every week after that, to have better and better games. And that means that the Xbox will be successful. But they would say that, wouldn't they? Fortunately, the Microsoft suits are letting the unscrubbed masses get their hands on the big controllers. We asked them for their first impressions. It's incredible, the sound. You really should listen to the sound yourself. It's like what I expected. It's, it's very impressive. Um, yeah, I like it, I like it already. Oh, the yeah. game I liked the most was the fighting game. It was really, the graphics was excellent. Like, I remember when the PS1 and PS2 came out, I played on it for hours upon hours, and it's, these games, only one or two I could see playing on for hours and hours. The others, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's not a game that would stop you doing the homework. I thought it was brilliant, like Project Gotham Racer. You could just pick it up and play it straight in there. It's easier to control than the PS2, much easier. Like, without a wheel. Yeah. First impressions, it looks it looks great. It plays a little bit wobbly, but that's just gonna take a bit of getting used to. I'm very happy. <laughs> March 14th is a big launch day, and by this time next year, we'll know whether the Xbox is the dog's bollocks or just bollocks. And yes, we'll be reviewing Xbox games from February onwards. One day, this festive madness will end, and we'll be able to get back to the important thing of playing games. But until then, here's your chance to be in the know about what's coming up. First up, it's a first look at the aptly named Johnny Mosley's Mad Tricks. The game, which comes out in February and is the first ever trick-based skiing game on the PlayStation 2, features the talented Olympic gold medalist Mosley himself. Try out his world-famous trademark Mosley Jump, the 360 Mute Grab. The release coincides with the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, Utah, where Johnny hopes his PlayStation practice will stand him in good stead for a second Olympic gold. Finally tonight, Mario's younger brother looking fit as a fiddle, it's Luigi in Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. Nintendo released their first home video game system way back in 1985. Since then, they've sold more than 1.4 billion games worldwide. So, what of their first and exclusive GameCube title? Luigi's Mansion is a one-player action adventure and the first to star Mario's younger brother. You may have spotted popping up in various <laughs> Nintendo games throughout the ages. It's a typical dark and stormy haunted house kind of night, and Luigi is investigating his newly inherited mansion. This game shows off the GameCube's graphic capabilities. The transparency of the ghosts are effects that Nintendo say only the GameCube can create. We'll be the judge of that. Well, thanks for joining us this evening on Thumb Bandits and what has been a really special Christmas occasion for all of us. Join us again in the new year when we'll have loads more great games. But in the meantime, you must check out our website www.channel4.com slash thumbbandits for games, reviews and hilarity. But pff, what the heck, it's Christmas. Let's forget about computer games. Kids, you can play computer games whenever you want. Right now, I want to sing a carol. Silent night Holy night, all is calm, yeah, all is bright, brown young virgin mother and child, holy infant soul. Shake it up, buggies.